defined client relationships, increased value, and profitability. Once you are mature as an advisor, you get to determine how client relationships function. This changes everything in terms of the value and profitability of client relationships. So the word has gotten out in regards to the revenue earnings that many of our advisors had enjoyed in the year 2020, even during the pandemic. So uh, back by popular demand, I'm going to share with you some of the uh, subset thoughts that we provide in our Advisor Blue Book, uh, which you are welcome to get a copy of the Advisor Blue Book report. Just contact USA Financial, ask for any one of the business development consultants, they can get that out to you. Uh, but I've done a couple of previous videos where I walk through uh, the teeter-totter page, as I like to call it, the, the items that happen to pressure up the value of your practice versus the items that happen to pressure down the value of your practice. And in going through these, these are really subsets of what has made many advisors uh, very successful over the years and what has helped them weather the storm during the uh, pandemic. And uh, most specifically, uh, I broke down some of the items. So you might want to go back to the previous two rare videos and you'll see how I break down a lot of those items. But today I'm going to break down uh, a few more and then uh, I'll do one more video along these lines which will get you through all of those. Now, it doesn't mean that there aren't other important things going on in your practice. Uh, this is not the end all be all list, but it is a great way to remember what's important and what to focus on in making your practice grow, whether it's during good times or whether it's during bad times. So uh, I'm going to share this with you here really quick. And today we're going to refer to this as the define, uh, defined client relationships, increased value, and profitability. So we're going to focus on the client relationships and most specifically some dynamics that go beyond the boundaries of the one-on-one -on -one relationship that you probably haven't necessarily thought through in terms of your practice. Now, I already mentioned the Advisor Blue Book. You're going to want to get a copy of that. Uh, if you don't have a copy of the Advisor Blue Book, uh, just contact uh, us, as I mentioned. But most specifically, this is kind of what's gotten a lot of attention as of late. Uh, we discussed this very briefly on a webinar that was done not long ago, and the focus of that was talking about and referencing what went on in the year 2020? Uh, this is a list of uh, the top 40 advisors earning revenue with USA Financial uh, during the course of the year 2020. And what you'll find is the average advisor down here in the bottom earned uh, an additional 5.2% growth rate in their revenue earnings during the pandemic, during 2020. Now, uh, that might sound great, and we're thrilled that people did grow during that period of time because most organizations actually were in the decline. Uh, but even more important is under normal circumstances, here's a three-year growth rate, which includes the pandemic. So two years of normal plus one year of the pandemic. And the average growth rate for this group in terms of the revenue they received was 185% increase over three years. So this is our sweet spot at USA Financial. Uh, this is what we do really well. Um, this is our hedgehog, if you're familiar with that terminology. Um, we take advisors and help them get to the next level sustainably and through high growth revenues, uh, re high, excuse me, high growth opportunities in their revenues moving forward. So oftentimes advisors come to us and, and they're trying to figure out how to get to that next level, how to break through. Uh, they're all a little different and we customize everything we do because of that. But that's really uh, what I, I pride USA Financial on is the ability to help advisors grow their practice and sustain that growth over long periods of time. And this, this chart uh, is just a great way to kind of illustrate some of that. But specifically, that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. I'm here to talk to you about some of these teeter-totter issues that we've discussed. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned, if you didn't pick up on the earlier videos, you'll want to circle back to those. Today, uh, I wanna talk to you about that defined client relationship and how it can increase vol, uh, the value and the profitability uh, to your practice. So most specifically, let's start with this one because the industry, in terms of valuations, if you were to go get an appraisal on your business, uh, the industry will tell you that the younger your average age of your client is, 
the more value that creates for your practice. Uh, and then obviously the opposite is true. The older that client's age is, the, the less valuable that is. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that um, I, I'm a bit of a contrarian in this capacity, uh, but I will point out to you why. Now, first of all, the obvious is there. Uh, the fact that, you know, uh, people who are age 50 and above, baby boomers and above, uh, they control still over 80% of the net worth in this country and will do so for the next 20 years. So if you're not in that age group, you're missing the boat anyway. And, and that flies in the face of, of this concept. But here's why that statement or that teeter-totter is true. Come down here and take a look at this right here some of these stats that we've got right in here um 70 percent of widows will fire their advisor after their spouse dies think about that 70 percent of widows these, these are actual stats from investment news as published 70 percent of widows will fire their advisor once their spouse dies second 66 percent of children will fire their parents advisor once they receive the inheritance. So if you stack 70% of the money walking out the door when the first spouse dies, and then another 66% walking out the door when the second spouse dies, that is why the industry looks at this and says, hey, the younger your client is, the longer we can hang on to the money, and therefore the more valuable it is. I will argue you can defeat that and I did talk about this in a previous video in much more detail and much more depth than I'm going to get into here. But I will argue that if you show that you can bridge the gap, that you can keep your clients intact when the first spouse dies, you can maintain that ongoing relationship and even further maintain a large percentage when they both die and it passes on to the children, then you can turn this on its head and you can make it work in your favor. And there's a lot of ways to do that. Go check out the other video. Now, next in line, is larger accounts, uh, larger average account size beats smaller account average account size. That's pretty obvious, but I think this is even more important and how it ties together right here. So this one, put some extra emphasis on that, right? I'm gonna box it in a lot heavier. If you control all of the household assets or accounts versus just individual or fractional house accounts, if you just have a transactional relationship with your clients, your practice will not be worth near as much as if you have a holistic or comprehensive relationship with clients. If you control all of the assets, not only does that make the value greater simply because there's more volume there, but it gets an enhancement. It gets an exponential result because you're now in control. You're the only cook in the kitchen. You don't want a bunch of different doctors giving a bunch of different conflicting, uh, conflicting prescriptions to the patient. Here now we have one doctor who's in control of all the prescriptions, so now they can piece it together like a puzzle, much better financial and estate planning opportunities. So that is a huge, huge component. The more, the higher the percentage of the overall assets of all of the clientele and all of their households that you can project and prove on paper, the more valuable that is to you in terms of valuation your practice, but think about the profitability. That's where we're all striving to be anyway. In fact, many USA financial advisors will not take on a new client unless they are becoming the only financial advisor for that client or they strongly believe that that will take place in the near future, let's say within the next 12 to 24 months. If they don't believe that's to be the case, many, and I'm not saying everybody, but many USA financial oriented advisors will simply pass. They'll walk by that client because they don't have the right relationship in tech. They want to define that relationship. And we have a whole process to help you do that. It's called the ACE appointment system. Uh, it's the advisor client experience appointment system. And uh, it's something that, again, you can look at other videos to get a little deeper feel for that, or you can contact USA Financial. Now, let's come over to this part. <clears throat> Upper right-hand corner. This one has changed dramatically during the pandemic, in my opinion. It used to be that if you were, if your clients were geographically condensed versus being scattered all over the countryside, that was much more valuable because from a business perspective, you want to be able to bring those people into your office and you want to be able to stack up appointments and you don't want to have to do a bunch of travel time if you're uh, out in people's homes, visiting in their homes, uh, or expecting them to drive long distances to come see you. 
Now, I will also tell you this is something that the pandemic helped immensely with. So today, if you, for example, are an advisor in the northern half of the United States and you're dealing with snowbirds, clients who go south for the winter, in the past, that's always been a challenge. You know, people back in the day tried Skype and then eventually they got to Zoom and so on. But it's always been a challenge to get your elderly clients on digitally to communicate with you. So you're on the phone. It's not the same experience and so on and so forth. Today, the vast majority of your older clients have learned how to do digital video. They've learned how to use Zoom uh, or the other tools that work similarly to Zoom. They've learned how to do this because they want to stay in touch with the family. They want to see the grandkids. And it's been a learning curve that has taken place inside of 2020 that under normal circumstances would have taken a decade or more for us to get there. But the pandemic got us there overnight. So now suddenly, if you do have a large snowbird clientele, not a problem. And I would also argue that goes even further along the geographical boundaries. We have advisors right now who are running entirely remote practices. So they were do they started to gravitate this way before the pandemic. The pandemic's helped get them there. In fact, there's an advisor who works with USA Financial, made an acquisition during the pandemic. He retained 100% of the new clients, hasn't met a single one of them physically face-to-face. -face. It's all been this way, the way we're having a conversation right now. Now, this is recorded for you, uh, but digitally, through Zoom, if you will. So the boundaries, the geographical boundaries are getting torn down. Uh, this one you can defeat now as well. And then here, this is always important. We need to have consistent lead gen and new business versus inconsistent lead gen and new business. Now, the pandemic's a little unique, but people were still generating leads, bringing on clients remotely, digitally, running webinars instead of live events. They are doing all the things. That's how they're growing during that, during that phase of time. Now, if you haven't been doing that or you're not doing that, now's the time. You need to start doing that because if you cannot show that you can weather that storm, not only does it hurt your profits today, hurt your revenue today, right? But it also hurts the value of your practice in the long run. So these things all tie very, very tightly together. And this starts to just simply stitch them together for you. Think like teeter-totters. Is this going to help my business? Is this going to hurt my business? And how does that fit together? And then finally, <clears throat> this one, a lot of people... Uh, kind of miss sometimes. And it, it fits in a lot of different areas of your practice, but you want to have quality, focused, tight institutional partners as opposed to scattered institutional partners. You want to have someone who knows your business, who works closely with you, because that's a relationship that can be leveraged. And it can help you run a smoother practice but also if someone is coming in to buy your practice, they have relationships there that they can now scale up in terms of buying into your business. No one wants to buy your job. Lots of people want to buy your business. So if you're running it like a sole proprietorship, you're going to get paid like you're running it as a sole proprietorship. If you're running it as a business, as an entrepreneur, you're going to get rewarded as if it's a business and an entrepreneurial enterprise. And that requires systems and processes and scale. And so this will help you as well. This is like a great big checklist for you to go through and identify how do we fit on these. Now, again, there's ways to sell around this. There's ways to overcome these items. I've talked to you about a couple here today, but this will give you a general idea of what's creating value for you in your practice. And today's focus is all about defining relationships, the way you interact with the customer, <clears throat> excuse me, so that you're increasing the profitability today on the P&L statement, but also the value tomorrow on the net worth statement. Uh, so again, if you would like a hard copy of this. It's our Blue Book Report. Contact USA Financial. Ask for one of the business development consultants. They can get you set up on this. Uh, and it's a great tool to kind of take a, a, a litmus test, a check, a thermometer uh, to see where you are on pace for what you could do in your practice to increase its value over time. And the beauty is if you increase the value, you're probably increasing the bottom line P&L as well. So hopefully this is helpful for you. Uh, I'm going to follow this up with one more about assets under management. That one's probably the most crucial of the series. Uh, I would encourage you to take a look at that. In the meantime, I hope you give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Love sharing this with you. Thanks for being on the Rare Advisor.